The linear feature definition, similar to the point feature definition as well as all other feature definitions, will always have a description and a name seed field that need to be completed. We also, again, have the option to select an item type definition if you want to define microstation item types and assign those to features. But let's talk about what's new and exclusive to a linear feature definition that's different perhaps from a point feature definition. One is the ability to create template geometry. In a template of a roadway or a corridor, we assign these linear feature definitions to those template points. If we want that particular linear feature to be drawn in our design plan view, we would set this to true. This setting does not have any effect on what gets drawn into the 3D model. The linear feature will always be drawn in the 3D model. This particular setting allows us then to also force it to be drawn in our design view as well, which is typically a 2D file. We also have symbology that we can set or select for what we want to appear in our linear and that is going to control both our 3D model symbology and typically our 2D plan symbology which is broken out in that feature symbology linear setting and we'll look at that in just a minute and then also what do we want to use for symbology in our profile view so we have to then define the linear feature symbology and the profile feature symbology for this particular linear feature definition so we have the linear feature definition pointing to the symbology for the 3D model and for the 2D plan and also for the profile views. And notice I just gave those the same name. I'm taking a look at a feature definition here called road edge of pavement. So now let's go down and navigate to our feature symbologies for that particular linear and profile entry. So under our linear feature symbology for pavement, again I used the same name and these particular settings are similar to what we saw in our point features but expanded somewhat. Again we have the the concept of this default element template which you can see that I'm using under our microstation element template folder structure linear, pavement, and then road edge of pavement for this particular linear feature symbology definition. If we want to have an annotation group, in other words when we place this or utilize this linear feature symbology we can assign it an annotation group to automatically do annotations. For example maybe you want to have a bearing and distance placed when you draw a line. You can assign an annotation group to do that. Also we have the capability, our 2D design plan view, to assign different symbologies for the arc and the spiral and the tangential element. So for example if you were setting this up for an alignment which is a case here, I've used three different element templates and an annotation group to define how I would set up the alignment. We'll talk about alignments a little bit more later but just to show you you don't have to use the default element template for everything. But in that particular example, I used the default element template to control what the line work was going to re be represented by in the 3D model. And so I didn't have a different element template for that. I just used what was set as the default. So we, again, control what we have in our plan view. Our tangential element, our arc, and our spiral can all be different. They can all be the same. We also have what we're going to use for symbology in our 3D model. And then lastly, for our dynamic cross sections, we can also have it place something in our dynamic cross section view. And to just show you an example of that, if I navigate down to the right away folder here and look at existing right away, in the linear feature definition for that particular entry, I'm actually placing a crossing point element template that is defined under the element template folder structure. 
modeling, points, right away dynamic access label, and e right away. And there I'm placing a cell and assigning the level color style and weight for that particular uh, cell to be placed. And so we have a lot of options in our feature symbologies for linear and how we are going to draw things and where we are going to draw them. Likewise, we also have to define a profile symbology. And so if I again come down to where we were at before, which was underneath our pavement, and road edge of pavement and notice that I kept the naming conventions the same. Again if we want to assign an annotation group to what we are placing in profile we can. What is our default element template that we would use and if you wanted to break up to have different element templates in your profile view you can do that as well. So for example maybe you want your tangential element to be blue and your curve to be green that's okay you can pick different element templates here. Also, when we're doing profile projections from one uh, piece of geometry to another, you could have that come in looking different in your profile view. And then also looking for profile intersection points. That particular element template represents a point in your profile view. And in, in our case, we rely solely on the default element template for everything except for the profile intersection point, which is using that particular microstation element template. And so that shows us then the symbologies that are required to set up our linear feature definition which are pointed to here and by breaking apart the symbologies from the feature definitions it allows us then to standardize on different types of color or symbology combinations representing different forms of our geometry. The last thing I want to point out with linear feature definitions and the way that our workspace is set up for examples and training is underneath our linear feature definitions and also the symbologies we have a folder named template points. There's been a lot of discussion through Select Series 3 and Select Series 4 about regarding linear features what does a user select to draw things versus what does a template draw and how would I know the difference because geometry drawn by a template is essentially a child of the corridor and it's not something that can be directly manipulated like a geometric feature that is drawn manually with the geometric tools and so the way that we broke this up is under our linear feature definitions we have a folder structure called template points so when a user is developing or, or creating templates they would utilize the feature definitions under the folder structure template points and so for example if I wanted to set up a point feature definition for a proposed edge of pavement you will see that I have an entry here called TL underscore edge of pavement. All of my template feature definitions for points are going to have the prefix of TL underscore standing for a line developed from a template and then we're going to do the same thing later we'll talk about template components but this allows the user to easily define what feature definitions they would utilize for template points versus what feature definitions they would use to draw entities and then I repeated the process under the feature symbologies we have a folder structure called template points and again I'm just repeating the names for simplicity uh, but you will see there that the TL underscore edge of pavement uses a default element template and so this is just a way to break apart what the user should use to define feature definitions that are going to be used by templates versus what feature definitions the user would be using to draw things geometrically with those particular tools if you found this video helpful please give it a like if you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.